Now, that is the power of data and the power of analytics, people. You see, we need to drive our policies and innovations with data to ensure that this third wave of poverty reduction is sustainable and leaves our planet more resilient. I left Sierra Leone as a teenager to pursue my education. 14 years later, with a PhD in biomechatronics and a young family, I moved back home at the call of my president, His Excellency Julius Madabio, to be part of something audacious, the creation of Sierra Leone's Directorate of Science, Technology, and Innovation. Now, Sierra Leone is known for a complicated set of socio-political challenges. It's a post-civil war and post-Ebola country of rapid population growth. Now, this complexity is why our government has opted to make Sierra Leone a blueprint for global development through innovation with a focus on education, human capital development, effective and efficient governance, accountability and transparency, national environmental resilience, economic diversification, and investments in science, technology, and innovation as key drivers for delivery. Now, to discuss the commitments our government is making and the impact we're striving for, and to have a conversation with Bill um, about how the ideas we've, he expressed can work on the ground, I have the honor to welcome to the stage the President of Sierra Leone, His Excellency Julius Madabio. President Bio, welcome. Thank you. You've heard Bill's remarks. Um, and as the president of Sierra Leone, where about 65% of the population are under 30, uh, maternal and child mortality numbers need real improvement. And the population is growing very quickly. Um, what are you doing to make the country healthier and better educated? Thank you very much. I want to use this opportunity to extend to everyone here greetings from Sierra Leone. Um, we've had our share of problems, civil war for 11 years, Ebola, um, man-made uh, catastrophes, and also recently we had a mudslide. With that in mind, I've had the opportunity of leading the country uh, for a very short time as a military officer. With that hindsight, what I have thought of of the, 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 the things I've harbored was how I could accelerate development in Sierra Leone to catch up with the rest of the world. We are lacking behind, I know that. But we don't want to go forward. We want to catch up with the rest of the world. So I have established a list of priorities. But sitting on top of, those, of that particular list of priorities is the human capital development. I campaigned on that, and I'm working on that. Uh, I am an example of human capital development and how it impacts development. I come from a village of less than 300 people. I didn't have shoes to go to school. I hardly had a chair to sit on at school. But when I look at how I have traveled a long and difficult journey from that village to the state house, that is the White House in Sierra Leone, I think education, which is human capital development, has played a critical role. And why do I say so? Because my mother, I lost my dad at the age of four. My mother could not read or write. But she understood several years ago that developing the human capital is the most important um, 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 assignment she had in order to make a change in this world. So she kept me in school. and. Um, I did my primary school and secondary school in Sierra Leone. I was fortunate to come to the United States where I did my first and second degrees. And I said to myself, I'm going to change Sierra Leone. I started first with a business and I ended up just employing 1,000 people. I said, this is not enough. This is not what I want to do. I have earned my degrees in one of the best countries in the world. I have to change Sierra Leone, the audacity that I wanted to do, I could not do as a businessman. So 
I decided again to try politics. It was quite difficult. You can't do politics without money, and I didn't have it. So the capital for politics anywhere in the world is the people. The people are the ones that make the decision as to who leads, especially in a democratic dispensation. So I got a run and got a message for them that resonates very well with them and sits very well with everybody. I want to develop this country, but I know that development is about people and it's for people. Therefore, you cannot develop a country if you do not develop the human capital. Development itself, as we all know, we are grappling with that around the world. We are crunching statistics every day. We change paradigms on a daily basis. We have tried several theories that have failed. How can somebody who does not know numbers engage in that? How can we sustain development if we do not educate first the most important resource we have on earth, which is human capital. So that's people and education are your priorities in this case, human capital and free quality education. Um, and Bill, you've just heard what President Bill's priorities are. Um, as the world's chief innovation officer, what current technologies and innovations <laughs> are you most excited about that will help transform societies um, in countries like Sierra Leone? Well, there's so many things we need. Um, you know, we need a vaccine for HIV, for malaria, uh, and we're hard at work on that. Uh, we need uh, better seeds, uh, better food fortification to deal with the malnutrition issues so these kids are ready to be educated. Another whole category uh, that I'm fascinated by is taking the digital tools to track activity. You know, so can we see, is the teacher showing up? Can we see the uh, whether the kids, their learning is improving. Can we uh, see if the vaccines are uh, in stock and immediately take action if it's not there? Even at the top level, can we take the government budget, uh, both the domestic resources and the donor money, and track it better uh, so there's a real sense of where did this money uh, have a strong impact, where did it not? So I think digital visibility on all these different services will help us uh, to find the people who are doing it well, uh, to spread best practices, uh, and to make sure that people have a sense that the government is learning and constantly improving. So that, that's a kind of a new category. Uh, you know, young people in each of their countries will have to think about what does that look like. Uh, but if we can improve these systems, health and education systems, through digital tracking, including the money getting uh, to the right places, I think that alone would be a, a gigantic innovation. President Beer, why now? I mean, what is it about the state of the world and where Sierra Leone is at this very moment that makes you believe that focusing on human development um, is the right path to take? Like I said earlier, the human resource is the most important resource that we have in the world. And uh, any attempt to embark on development without first going back to the human resource, we never work. All the countries in the world that have advanced in the, in the past couple of years from the examples we saw are countries that are investing and continue to invest on human resource. I believe that through technology, again, I want to say thank you to David, who accepted my invitation to go back home <laughs> from IBM. I had to find special words to convince him to go back, uh, to go back to one of the poorest countries. But I challenged him, and, and that is the challenge I want to throw to the world. Yes, we are one of the least developed countries in the world, but I believe that we can move and catch up with the rest of the world within a very short time if we use technology. As you were saying, Bill, the education project, which is my flagship project uh, for the government, what I want to do is to really, already have declared free education, but I want to make this free education from primary school to secondary school, not only free or accessible, but also quality that is competitive around the world. How can I use technology to deliver tuition, quality or world standard uh, tuition to the last village in Sierra Leone? We have started the process. 
but we need the, the, infra, the technological infrastructure to be able to deliver quality. I believe that the last boy or girl in the village getting the same quality tuition like those in the United States can perform very well. I believe in that, and that is why I, from a, from a very poor home, that is how I got to sit by you. <laughs> and I believe that we can move a lot of other people. Why free education? People are so poor that they cannot afford up to $20 a year to pay for their kids. So a lot of kids are dropping out of school. We do not have the wherewithal, but I have challenged the nation, and we have started the process. This year, every child going to a government or government-assisted school is doing so freely, and we are providing not only tuition, but also um, textbooks, uniforms, and providing to, um, um, uh, nutrition so that they, 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 that can keep them in school. So I truly believe that um, we can do uh, the quantum leap to catch up with all of you if we use technology as a tool. And that is why I appointed, established first the Directorate of Science, <laughs> Technology, and um, Innovation. We want to innovate Sierra Leone to catch up with the rest of the world so, can we, so that we can be part of the world community. Thank you. Bill, you get the last question. Um, how do you want people to respond to what they hear today? Now, there are lots of people who are in the room and many young people who are viewing this uh, live globally, um, watching this session. What do you want them to do now? How do you want them to respond? Well, this week is a special week in the year where we really do focus on these broad goals and where we look at what the challenges are. Uh, you know, I think in response to that, it, people going and visiting, going to Sierra Leone, seeing what's there, uh, thinking about their personal capabilities, their institution's capabilities, you know, say their university or their hospital, can they be paired up with an institution in Africa to spread those best practices? Uh, you know, for people who are, are lucky to have a great education, the idea of doing like you're doing, going back, diving in, uh, helping out, modernizing these systems, seeing new opportunity, uh, that's the, the type of engagement we need, and we need it on a very, uh, a very big scale. Uh, you know, I, I do believe that innovation is key here, but only if that innovation focuses on this big, big gap. You know, the numbers look very, very daunting, uh, but we, we need to engage ourselves and, and surprise the world on the progress we make. You've heard it, people. Um, thank you, President Bio. Um, I look forward to working with you to truly make Sierra Leone an example to the world of how innovation can help us achieve the sustainable development goals. And Bill, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.